Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well. My name is Captain and today I will be your guide. So, I will begin by showing you what classes we used, the gear we had, as well as what mods keep you alive. I will then take you through each encounter, showing you where the safe spots are, as well as the most effective strategies. There are timestamps in the description below. First off, I want to give a shout out to this guy for helping me change my understanding on the focusing lens mod. But more on that later. Now, our loadouts are based on the sword strat that we shall use against the boss. I will explain that a little bit later on as well. I ran Warlock with well to keep us alive at some of the more tougher parts of a nightfall. A bow for overloads and sniping from a distance. I also had a fusion rifle for unstoppables. You can use any fusion or linear. I prefer the Cartesian because of the range and the damage. Make sure to have major spec on it as well. Finally, I had a sword for the boss. Make sure the sword has either Vortex or Whirlwind Blade and the boss spec on. Our second teammate also ran well with the same loadout as me. Our third teammate was a Stasis Hunter running Duskfield Grenade. For weapons, he ran an AR for ad clears. Ideally, a bow or pulse rifle for stunning champions would be better as you have more of a choice there. Trinity Goal helped a lot with the Arc Shields. There are only three Arc Shields in a Grandmaster. Two at the beginning and one after the third Blight. Tarantula worked out great against the Unstoppables, but any other linear will do. You need at least two swords, so if you want, you can take in three to make it even easier. The reason for Stasis is that it helped to keep the Unstoppables at bay and help to deal extra damage against the boss. There isn't any particular set of exotic armor that you need to run. Personally, Warlock should have Phoenix Protocol to help gain their supers back quicker, whilst the Hunter can run Frosties to help with ability regeneration. Now for our mods. The Warlocks were running Focusing Lens because the mod boosts damage of all light abilities used on enemies affected by stasis, light abilities being Arc, Solar and Void. So, if you were to throw a Duskfield Grenade onto a boss and then Thunder Crash it, you would deal extra damage. What I learned recently is that the mod does not affect your weapon damage, unless you are standing in a Well of Radiance which turns your weapons into Weapons of Light. Any weapons that use stasis do not get a buff from Focusing Lens. Some people say that Particle Deconstruction doesn't stack anymore. It does still stack up to 5, for a total of 40% damage boost. It has been slightly nerfed, so it doesn't stack with other abilities like the Hunter's Shadow Shot. If you want, you can run Passive Guard on your sword and that will help reduce incoming damage whilst wielding it. Personally, Particle Deconstruction helps to make short work of the Unstoppables, so choose whichever works best for you. Moving on to Leg Armor, we have Fusion and Linear Scavenging mods on. For the chest armor, I suggest you have either a solar dampener mod on, as there are knights that fire flames at you. This mod will help you counter it, however, if you don't have it, then it isn't the end of the world. You'll just need to play a little bit more passive. A sniper damage resist mod will help a lot, as there are plenty of vandal and overload snipers. For gauntlets, make sure to have unstoppable and overload mods on. For the helmet, have ammo finder mods on. My two teammates pretty much had the same mod loadouts as me, with the exception of a hunter who had resident siphon on. Now, with that out of the way, let's get started on the first encounter. So, the first encounter has three blights that need to be destroyed. Each blight has adds protecting it. As you destroy each blight one by one, there will be more ad spawns in between each location. You can completely avoid this. At the start, stay up top and take out the adds below. The person who has arc is responsible for taking out the two arc shields at the beginning. Once done, remain at the back until the ads are disposed of. There will be scions at the back who tend to hide behind the tree in the back right. Try not to leave any alive so they won't duplicate. Once the ads are dead, focus fire on the unstoppable champion. It might go into the shield, so have one person drop down to draw it out. Be careful as there are pools of taken liquid on the ground which cause damage over time. Try to avoid them. Once the champion has been dealt with, do not destroy the first blight. Leave a B and travel to the second one. This is the cheese strategy or whatever you want to call it. There is no point in destroying them one by one because all it does is it spawns ads between you and each blight. Taking them out takes too long and is a waste of revives. Even if you don't waste revives you will get nothing out of it. The Duskfield grenades are great for keeping stronger enemies at bay. However, the downside is that some champions will often slowly recover health or will be taken out of a stun animation. This isn't a huge problem, as they only take a little extra to kill. So, it is entirely up to you whether you want to use them or not. So, kill the unstoppables by the second blight by drawing them away from it. Once they are close enough, stun them and kill them. Here, you can destroy the blight. Either stand in the shield and kill it, or jump onto the top of it and destroy it this way. As you can see, I didn't take any damage. Travel to the third blight and repeat the process of killing the adds, then dealing with the unstoppables in the same manner. 
try to draw them out one by one so you don't get overrun. Once done, destroy the third blight. Now, the person with arc and the person with well stay behind. Go to the front of a room and then on the left there is a broken down vehicle. Use this for cover and wait. The third person will travel back to the beginning to destroy the first blight. Once they do, as will spawn at the back of a room past the broken car. There will be two overloads, scions and a mini boss of arc shields. Using your well, take out the smaller adds before dealing with the overloads. Use the car and wall for cover against the snipers. Whilst in this position, the third person should be making their way back as soon as they destroy the first blight to join you in your fight. In the next room, there will be three platforms going down to the bottom. Each has adds with a second and last having three mini bosses with solar shields. Stay at the top and work your way down. There are stairs on your right leading to the second platform. From here, there are some more stairs on the left leading down to the last platform. Stay at a distance and avoid the taking cloud that the boss sends at you as they can one shot you. As you get to the next room, there will be a tunnel leading to the outside encounter. At the end, there are two unstoppables. The best way to deal with them is to draw them close through the tunnel, preferably one by one. Whilst in this tunnel, freeze them and dispose of them. It's better to do it here as it is easy for them to knock you off a map on the other side of the tunnel. Once done, go through the tunnel and put down a well. Use the well to stay alive and take out the adds closest to you. Once we have been cleared out, focus fire on the overload sniper. From here, maintain your distance and work your way forward using the left side and top platforms. By using the top platforms, you can get easy shots onto the Vandal snipers at the back. There is an overload in the middle of the lower platform, so use the high ground to take it out. Once cleared, take out any remaining adds on the left side of the map. Be careful as there are plenty of taking blights everywhere that can knock you off a map. Now that the adds have been cleared, there is only one mini boss, one unstoppable and an overload left. Take the boss out first as he will just get in the way later. He has solar shields and he can spit fire so keep your distance. Then, using the left side of the map, stun the unstoppable and the overload. Once they are stunned, have one person jump past. This will give you more space and two different angles, which is better than being bundled up on the left side. Whilst behind them, be careful of a taken blight on the wall so it doesn't knock you off a map. In the next room, there will be adds directly to your left, along with an unstoppable. To not get caught in the tunnel, everyone exit and put down a well. Use it to stay alive and take the adds out quickly as possible. There will be three knights and an overload on the stairs leading to the top. In this section, it is easy to die to the fire that the knight spits at you. Use the wall and broken steel pillar on your right to create a barrier between you and the adds on the right. Then, focus on the knight on the left. Once dealt with, use the stairs on the left and the back of a room to take the knight out on the right side. Then you can focus on the overload. You might have to stun the overload first before dealing with a knight. Before reaching the top of the stairs, be careful of a knight to your left. He has an easy shot on you so it'll take him out quickly. Taking down his shield will briefly stun him, so use that opportunity to put in damage before he launches fire at you. In the next room, there will be adds to your left and the witch to your right. Take out all the adds from the entrance. The witch deals a lot of damage, so have two people go to the left to distract whilst one person with a void weapon takes down the shields. In the next encounter, there will be three tunnels. In each tunnel, there is an overload sniper at the back. So, in the first tunnel, stay at the front and kill the overload. If the overload is hiding around the corner, then take out the adds on the right. Once done, move up and take out the overload. From here, there will be two more overloads, so stay at the back of each tunnel and continue to snipe at them. Whoever is the closest will be targeted, so if that is you, just strafe left and right to avoid being hit. You are now in the boss room. There will be a final blight with some adds and a knight inside. Once the adds and blight are destroyed, put down a well, throw your stasis and pull out your swords. Get close and personal with the boss and take it out. And that is how you complete the Lake of Shadows. If you guys have enjoyed the video, then please check out my other guides on the channel. I do post content on other games, so I would appreciate it if you could check it out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.